Okay. See you then. Brilliant. All right, Ranveer. Uh, now, Martin Hibbert um, is an inspiration to so many people, and he was standing just metres away from the Manchester Arena bomber when the bomber triggered the blast, killing 22 people. Martin survived but was left paralysed after suffering more than 20 shrapnel wounds. He's an incredible guy, uh, and he's absolutely determined, and he's making this happen. He's not just saying it, he's not just sort of talking the talk. He's, he's really, really doing this. He's using what happened to his family as a, a force for good. We're going to speak to Martin in just a second. But first, here's Olivia Guthrie with uh, an, an inspiring journey. Martin Hibbert was taking his 14-year-old daughter Eve out for a meal and a gig in Manchester in 2017. Neither could have imagined how their night would end. A suicide bomber detonated his device at the end of the Ariana Grande concert they'd just watched. 22 people died and dozens more were injured. Martin and Eve were the closest to the Manchester Arena bomber to survive. Eve suffered a catastrophic brain injury, leaving her needing 24-hour care. Martin suffered 22 shrapnel wounds, one of which severed his spinal cord. But he's determined being in a wheelchair won't keep him down. I knew to fall five years ago when I was told I would never walk again, that here I would be at the top of Kilimanjaro. Last summer, he became the second paraplegic person to summit the highest peak in Africa. As his daughter turns 21 this year, Martin now has a new mountain to climb, taking on what he calls the degrading treatment of disabled people. Mm. And Martin joins us now. Um, your life changed in a flash, in a moment, didn't it, okay. at the Manchester Arena? and how you're rebuilding it and forging forward is extraordinary and inspirational. And it's a reminder, I think, actually, because you're campaigning so hard for disabled people yes. and disabled access, that actually disability is not is something that can happen to anyone... Correct. ..at any point. And that is what makes your case, I think, so powerful, isn't it? Uh, of course. And, uh, you know, uh, kind of seeing that footage, it mm. kind of brings it all back. You know, it's six years ago now, but, you know, when, when you see that footage, it almost feels like yesterday because you, you, mm. you, you brought back into that every day. You know what I mean? Obviously, when I see my daughter, you know, you, you're constantly reminded of it. Mm. Uh, but in a way, it's kind of going through that. And, you know, I've, I've been very vocal about it, you know, I didn't think I was going to come out of that arena that night. Mm. Uh, I'd and many didn't. No, you know, and to, to tell the person that was looking after me, you know, I don't think I'm going to make it, tell my wife I love her, you know, to accept that and to, you know, to accept that you're going to die is, is, a, is a hard thing to go through. And then to wake up a couple of weeks later in intensive care, you know, to be told that you're alive but you, you're paralysed, it's kind of like, well, I'll, I'll take that because what I saw that night mm. and what I still see of that night, mm. you know, the fact that we're even here and I'm here today to talk to you is, is a miracle and there's a reason you, why I'm here. Did mm. they tell you the, kind of the moment you woke up uh, no. that, that you'd been paralysed? No. And the, there's, the, uh, well, I'd, I'd, been, I'd been through uh, quite a, a rough uh, journey with depression and... And again, I've only recently learnt that, um, you know, Eve's uh, injuries were that bad that they didn't think that they were going to make it either. And I've only just recently seen, because I'm doing some legal work, uh, that, uh, and I saw it in black and white, and it really made me stop in my tracks that it was like, look, you know, not only do we have to get Martin ready to come to terms with being paralysed, but the fact that he's lost his daughter. Mm -hmm. So to see that in black wow. and white and to know that they were having those meetings at the time oh. is, you know, and again, like the hers are standing up on my neck because yeah. that was, you know, I'd have not, nobody's told me that, but it was obviously... And I know it was obviously, even for myself, it was a, you know, a very tough time and it was very touch and go whether we'd, we would make it, but the coroner was ringing Eve's ward every day because they thought she was going to be number 23. The coroner was calling? Yeah. My God. Because that's how serious... Hey. Uh, but to see that in black and white, that, you know, not only do we need to get Martin ready to accept his injuries, we also need to tell him that he's lost his daughter. Um, so they told me three, three four weeks uh, later when I started to obviously come around mm -hmm. and started to question things and my wife couldn't couldn't hide it from me anymore. You mean why, mm. I, why I can't move my legs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, when, when did you 
reached this, it's almost a philosophical thing, where you decided, you know what, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use the fact this has happened to me for good. When, when did that light bulb go on, or did it slowly it, it, flicker yeah. to life? Yeah, it was the day I was told I wasn't going to walk again. Really? Yeah. Same day? Yeah. Wow. And I, I, obviously I was on a lot of medication and things, but there's only various things that I remember. It's obviously being told uh, that I wasn't going to walk again. And um, even says in my medical report, you know, we've never seen a patient like it. You know, he's come to terms with it very quickly. Uh, and, I, and I take it back to what happened that night. Mm. You know, I was losing a lot of blood. You know, I could see Eve was in a bad way and I could feel, I, I knew I was dying. Um, mm. So to accept that, to come to terms with that and to tell the security guard that was trying to keep me alive that, you know, tell my wife, Gabby, that I love her. Mm. You know what I mean? I, I'd accepted that I wasn't going to make mm. it. And, I, I, you know, that's what I take it back to. And, Got it. you know, to be alive and... There's only one way to There's go. There's great yeah, foot. Yeah, You're I, I survive great for a foot. reason, you know? And so you have that gift, as I know you've often talked about it, of being here to turn it for good. Yes. Um, so what are you fighting for now? So, um, obviously, being uh, disabled, um, you know, obviously, I was in a, a lovely hospital. I went to a spinal unit. I had people looking after me 24-7. And then you come home. Mm. You know, you don't press a button to get a nurse. Mm -hmm. You have a... I was on 30-odd tablets a day. I had mm -hmm. to have a spreadsheet. You don't get a manual. My yeah. wife, Gabby, became, as you'll know, you mm -hmm. know, my wife, Gabby, became my carer overnight. She didn't get any training or a yeah. manual. Uh, I almost liken it to... And I know it's totally different, but I, I almost liken it to the first day you bring your son or daughter home and you come back and, you, yep. and you're like, you look yep. at each other and go, what now do we what? do? Yeah, and it's almost <laughs> and like that. And it's a that. mixture of sort of elation and yeah. you're standing over the crib, aren't yeah. you? It's, it's sort great of like because you're, you're home and you're in your bed, you, mm. you, you're lying it's next thrilled. to your wife again. I mean, I was in hospital for six months, mm. you know, so the fact that I was in a bed with my wife again was, you know, amazing. And But it's that the nurses aren't there when you're in pain, you, you've got to take your own medication. You're in, a, in this new world of mm. being disabled. And just the, again, probably as you know with, with Derek, you know, just the daily barriers mm. and, and me being a, a proud Boltonian uh, from the <laughs> north, I, I just won't accept it. You know, people saying, well, it's just life. Well, it's not. Just because I'm in a wheelchair, it shouldn't mean that I can't eat in nice restaurants or travel. Well, this, well, this is what you discovered. You see, those of us who are able-bodied and perhaps are, are, don't have um, any kind of disabled factors in yeah. our lives in terms of a partner or a child or whatever, we kind of casually assume in 2023 that we've kind of mostly got wheelchair access sorted, yeah. where it's stations, restaurants, you mentioned that. And you've discovered it ain't like that no. at all. It's no, still I mean, incredibly it's, difficult. I mean, again, I won't go into it today, but even, like, last night, you know, coming down to London at 9 o'clock last night, I didn't have a hotel because the accessible room that the Hilton thought was, you know, that they presumed was accessible, mm -hmm. I couldn't get in. Couldn't get in? No. So, yeah. 9 o'clock last night... I'm so sorry. Know, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. There's, we're going to have a different uh, story on it, but uh, uh, we, we've had a thought about, you know, what this can do, but this happens every day. And you found this as well with, I with Derek, I found this as you? well, um, very briefly, because we're much more into your story <laughs> of travelling back from the US after yeah. some treatment in the US. Uh, Heathrow was celebrating that they'd put in a new... Uh, wheelchair width um, uh, thing. You know when you go through and you put your passport yes. scanner yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. And before that, you Can't couldn't get, get a wheelchair through. Yep. They'd put one in at vast expense. When it, they came, we came to do it with Derek, who has a disability, has a wide range, doesn't yeah. it? And he hasn't got the cognition you've got or, or the strength that you've got in your upper body. Um, we realised we couldn't get him into the country because yep. he went forward, the de door locked, but the disabled person has to free it and you're not allowed because of the border to do it yourself. No. So he was stuck yep. in no man's land, literally between two borders for, for about an hour or so. And so that's even when conscious effort has been made yep. to make things work. And I wonder if it's because that there aren't enough disabled people talking to the Correct, right people, it? which That's is what's what great is, about it? today, because you are going to Westminster Correct. to talk it, directly. It's, it's the only rationale that I can put on it that, you know, architects that are designing buildings, you know, probably aren't disabled. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that there are disabled architects out there, you know, um, but I... Um, 
I, I went to see Tom Persglove in January, who's the disability mm. minister, and I saw him face to face. And I, I said it, you know, in my Boltonian charm. I just said, look, <laughs> I'm not here for a day out, mm. you know, for you to tick a box to say that you've met somebody with, you know, a disability. Good for you. You know, I said, I want you to commit to some things. And did he uh, respond? He, he did, you know what? And, and uh, I've been very vocal about it. You know, we're very quick to uh, talk about politicians when they don't do what they say. But I, I've got to say, Tom perskloff has been very good. You know, I've met him three or four times face to face. Mm. The commitments that I asked him to do is done. So he came mm. over to the charity that I'm vice president for, the Spinal Injuries Association. He came over to there, spent about three or four hours, because what I said to him, I said, you need to get in the trenches, which mm. is a common mm -hmm. thing that I talk about, you know. It's no good just saying it, you've got to get in the trenches and you, you've yeah. got to see it from where I'm sat. Yeah. And he did, he spoke to people like me with spinal cord injuries, he spoke to members of staff to understand what they're dealing with every day. Well, good luck later today. Thank you. Um, you you're a champion for the cause, you yes. really are. Very briefly, because we're way over time, but I do okay. want to ask you this. Uh, we saw Lucy Letby deciding not mm. to appear in court and uh, to hear her sentence and witness statements. The accomplice of, of, the, of the bomber who did this to you, he was convicted, he wouldn't come into court either and hear his life sentence. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Yeah, I mean, again, I've, I've been very vocal about it. Um, you know, I don't think people understand, unless you've been in that situation, the, the strength, physically and mentally, that, that it takes to go to court every day and to hear what they've planned and what they obviously carried out. Uh, and I, a lot of people don't know, but I'd actually, because it was in the Old Bailey, I was going to actually come and live in London for six months so I could attend every day. They were going to make it accessible for me. And then I found out that... Actually, if he was going to appear, he'd probably have a screen there, so we wouldn't be able to see him. And then when it actually came to uh, the day of sentencing, I was going to actually come down and I wanted to look him in the eye to say, look, you know, you can take my legs, but I'm not defeated. Good for you. So the fact that when my police liaison said he's, he's not going to be there, I, I didn't even think that that was right. No. You know, I said, well, he gets, he gets yeah. the choice. So, so no, I've, I've put my, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, like we've seen with Lucy Letby, Hashem, uh, Ellie Edwards, Killer, you know, they shouldn't have the choice. They should stand in front of judge and jury. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't have a choice, you know, that night on the 22nd of May. I've, you know, I wanted to have that, you know, mm -hmm. I wanted to look him in the eye and, and tell him I'm not defeated. But like I've said, you know, I, I'll never forgive the justice system for that because he took that power back to his jail cell and he'll have that over me for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they should have that power. That's a very um, eloquent and, I would say, unassailable argument for changing the law. For sure. Get these people into the dock. Mm. Correct. Yeah. Good to Good speak later. to you. Thank you. And uh, your revenge, if you like, is to have such a successful <laughs> life and Thank to you. keep fighting, Thank which you. is and great we're going to have a chat after the show. We are. Yes. Yeah. OK, yeah. see you later. Look forward to it. We're going to have a look at the weather. Laura.